So I have a lot of projects going on right now and sometimes I need uh, motors, screws, maybe plastic or metal pieces, just all sorts of stuff. A lot of times I just need basically just circuits as well. And the best way that I have found to do so is to go to a place like um, Salvation Army or anything like that and for a couple bucks buy yourself a printer. This one a company had, it's a DeskJet 1220C and um, they were just throwing it out so I took it. So I just kind of want to show what parts I normally take from these. Um, believe it or not there's a lot of really good parts in here. Um, so I'm just going to go straight for it. This video is literally just me taking it apart. I may explain a couple things, uh, what I find useful or what things are. Otherwise, I'm just going to go straight for it and take it apart. So let's see if I can give you a better shot. Okay. We don't need this. We don't need this. Let's see, what else? The cover is going to have a sensor on it, and this comes right off. We don't need this. Alright, I think that's about all that I can take off. Let's see. Here we are. Very, very um, handy to keep the screws on a lot of these, to keep the metal pieces, um, the springs, all sorts of unique parts uh, are generally used for these types of printers. And so if you can um, grab one and you know go for it, just you know there's some ink there and it's just got all over my hand. So uh, that's gonna be some, some fun cleanup. Let me see if I can put some paper towels down lessen the mess I'm going to have to clean up, I'm sure. Yeah. All right, let's see. How do we get this thing? All right, this is for the paper to turn and print. We don't need it. How do we get this thing off? Okay. So. Ah! Don't need it. All right. All right, now if we take a look in the back, uh, one of the things you're gonna see is obviously the main board. Uh, here we go, we've got the parallel USB, different ways to connect. I'll try and zoom in a little bit. There we go. So, uh, we've got the USB parallel port. This is the main circuit board. Here's the microprocessor for it. Um, this here is a, an extra or additional memory um, or the primary memory. Uh, a couple other controllers, uh, because this has a USB, so there'll be a controller for that. This here, um, I don't know how clear this is, but if you take a quick look, you can see that it's got some really nice sensors, and uh, what they are used for is basically like a photo sensor. So if you need to close a door or to show that um, a flag is cleared, this is what this is right here. In fact, that door and the back, um, how this would work is a piece of plastic goes in and cuts the infrared view like a laser. It just cuts it, goes right in, and uh, turns the switch off. So that's what that is. And we have the standard uh, ribbon cable, which is right here uh, for the data and some power. Got some information stuff here for the power, more cables here. These are all good cables, good connections to keep, so I'll just keep tearing it down. All right, let's see, okay, they switched hexes. Uh, HP loves to use hex style. I guess they figure most people don't have it, so they'll use it. As I mentioned before, keep the screws, they'll be handy. Um, this is definitely handy because there's some sensors on it that I can use. Um, if I'm in a pinch, I suppose I can use these capacitors. With HP being a, a name brand, they're not going to go cheap and use crappy components. So you got the capacitors, resistors, some inductors. So if you need high quality for whatever you're using, you're guaranteed that uh, 
basically that they're going to have a good quality one. All right, I think this should be it for the main board. All right, so let's take a look. What's holding this in here? All right, so um, if we didn't see before, not sure how clear that is, this is a, um, a sensor. One of them is an infrared and another one is the sensor. And uh, as I said, how it works is, uh, and you know, it may, for example, remain on and then as soon as something inter interrupts that light, it'll uh, turn off. And you can see that uh, this board has a one, two, Three. So this is how it knows whether you've closed the door or not. So pretty neat and we'll keep this. Okay, and what else do we have back here? All right, we have danger, uh, high voltage. So we'll play around with that. Now this is indeed high voltage. It's not uh, HP just trying to prevent you or trying to get you from not going in here. And uh, the reason it's high voltage is because this printer unlike most of them which have a wall warp, those are those black things that uh, normally hang out from a laptop. This one feeds directly into uh, the printer from your house. And as a result, it has the components out here rather than, uh, and it has them internally rather than externally. And so this is why it's saying high voltage, the components are here. Um, it's not a joke, they are high voltage. Um, even though this printer has been turned off, uh, chances are the capacitors could still right now contain. I haven't uh, confirmed and shut them off yet. Uh, just work long enough on these. I know what, what to touch and what not to touch, I suppose. So be careful. Uh, all right, let's see. I think that should be about it. All right. And you notice the blue wires here are considerably thicker than these data lines, and that should make perfect sense since it's carrying higher current. All right, and let's see if I can. This is the, uh, I don't know how clear that is. So this is the power. Here's coming in from the 110 AC, and you have, um, Wow, these are actually quite a bit, quite a bit of components in here. So it's clearly not anything cheap. You've got the uh, inductors, your standard capacitors, your bridge rectifiers. Uh, those are up there. You got a little bit of brains here, some signal signal conditioning. Obviously, this is dropping it down from uh, 110 to probably 18 volts AC before it gets rectified and cleaned up. Uh, another inductor here, some good capacitors. So. This is something that we'll definitely keep. Just all right. And if you'd like a closer look, there it is. I'll try and manually do this. There we go. So this is the power converter from the 110 AC outlet to um, 18 volts DC uh, for the digital circuits. All right. Put that back in. Manual, so we'll keep this, that's good. Um, don't really need the shield. All right, so what do we have next here? Okay, these long wires that you see trailing around the perimeter of the chassis, make sure you keep those. A lot of times they go to sensors or you can uh, reuse those. So don't uh, just willy-nilly cut them in the center and, and discard them. They'll definitely come in handy. Uh, so right now, working on this uh, front pa power panel here and you know, there it's disconnected. And let me see. Let's see if I can undo this. So I suppose, you know, if you're looking for some LEDs or you're looking for some switches, clearly this printer has some, right? It's gotta know, you gotta be able to turn the printer on. You've gotta be able to press the buttons in configuration. And that's what this is right here. Uh, wait for my camera to catch up. That's what this is right here. So you've got your three switches, your LED. Um, really, that's it, nothing special. But if you're working with the Arduino and you need to 
you're in a pinch or you just need to get some and save some money, there you go. You can make yourself a small project right here. In fact, if you trail back, you don't have to take the switches out at all. You can look at the back of these uh, traces and figure out where the connections are to here. And then from there, right, you've got the cable. I said don't cut it. You could connect this back. And now you have switches that you could use for your Arduino. And instead of messing with all four wires and they're very small, go to the other end of this, wherever this trails off to, and connect that to the Arduino. Connect this to your pin 13 and pin 12 and your ground and VCC, whatever you need to do with it. So that's why I was saying keep the cable. So we're going to keep this, keep the cables. All right. So here are a bunch of springs. This is for the paper to uh, come from the back end if you needed to. Uh, there's an easier way to take this off, but again, you know, um, I keep a collection, a huge collection of springs. Um, they come in handy, different sizes, different lengths, different strengths, and here's my jar of, um, of springs, so definitely going to use that. Um, let's take a look. Since this is the data cable coming in from, or going to the inkjet printer, uh, the data is digital and it's got to be very clean. And this is what this is. It's a, a inductor. I'm sorry, not an inductor. It's a ferrite core. And um, it's got special magnetic and electric properties. So electromagnetic. And its function is to go around the perimeter of this data cable. And if you have, for example, signals, uh, let's say noise signals from the outlet or from the lights above you, whatever, and they're riding along this cable, right? Before it gets to the print head, uh, this ferret core is designed to try and prevent the signals riding on the outside. So, just reduces noise overall. Um, keep a couple of those handy, they're nice. Keep these ribbon cables, they come in extremely handy in projects where you need uh, seven segment display, etc. You can just connect straight to here, or you can use the system board that connects to and then find the trails on here. And from here, you can put these to your microprocessor, which is generally what I do because it's considerably easier. All right, so now we've got some stepper motors here. Oh, let's see how easy this is going to be to remove. Oh. So obviously, as I said, inkjet printer, so this is a stupid mess. Ugh. Yeah, those were cheap to operate, not. All right. So here is uh, another sensor. Um, what is this? What is this? Oh, that's interesting. This is the, uh, some type of photo sensor. I think this one emits like a blue light. I've seen them on some printers to know the edge of the paper. So again, pretty neat. And there you go. More electronics, exactly what I'm looking for. All right, let's see. We don't care about that paper trail. Let's see if I can get the stepper motor off or if it's gonna make me fight for it. Try and move that to a slightly better angle. Ah, superb. All right. Um, here is a stepper motor. This is to feed. Uh, this is to move the paper forward and back, so to feed it. And it's got the uh, model number on the uh, side there. This is going to be very handy, so I can find out, for example, how much torque you can get, the proper configuration, power, amperage, etc. Um, printers, an excellent place to get very high quality motors. Um, most of the time you'll have one or two stepper motors in there. Um, and if you don't know what the stepper motor is, it's basically a motor that 
inside um, has many more coils than a standard DC motor would have. And what that means is that it um, basically it can stop and go very quickly. So it's basically in steps, hence a stepper or stepping motor. So you can design these, for example, for every degree it may turn just one and then you have a 365 uh, degree uh, motor and it's very very precise whereas a DC motor it you know if you stop the part on it it may stop at one direction and then if you start and stop it again even if it's the exact same time the exact same voltage you can't account for drag whatever you have and that um, and that means that the DC motor will stop in uh, random directions all the time so um, that's why you would normally use a stepper motor okay so um, the stepping motor, as I said, you feed a certain voltage and it turns only a certain degree and then it stops. So a very, very precise turning. A DC motor doesn't. Now what's very interesting, and I never right, quite understood, um, actually now that I think about it, I do know why. Um, the issue with the stepper motor is you can only go to a finite degree. So it can only turn, you can only get the coils and the movement so small to where maybe you can half a degree. or. Um, a tenth of a degree at the very very most and that's it so um, in printers like this where you're printing something and you may be uh, you know milli you're looking at milli distances here right um, for the printer where the inkjet and the um, ink should be printing uh, right so you want sharp contrast words how do you get that sharp well you can't do that with the stepper motor because the direction you can only tell it to be so precise so they use DC motors uh, to drive this uh, carriage assembly and they use um, DC motors in the printers for other things. So how do they then get the DC motor to stop exactly where it needs to be and be more precise than a uh, stepper motor, which I just said was, you know, fairly precise. Well, what they do is they use a feedback. And uh, the feedback mechanism basically is an encoder. An encoder tells it what current direction the uh, mechanism is at. And it tells it when to stop and, and it might feed bit current to tell it to go back. So this right here see if I can maybe get my light to be a little closer. okay I think that's that's slightly better so this right here is uh, an encoder and again there's an LED on one side or it could be um, infrared probably and it's got a sensor on the other side now all along this perimeter along this wheel are small little black tick marks and these black tick marks tell it what position or when it's gone a specific degree a specific angle and there's clearly more than 365 on this one just because I can tell them they're very very small so I'll show you that later so this is what tells it exactly where the printer is what path it should be going and this is connected to the wheel so when this turns it knows okay I went from 9 to 10 and in between that there's a hundred tick marks so you can figure out the division by that if there are all the way up to 12 just like a clock uh, in this example so 12, 1, 2, 3, 4 and then within each one there's probably a hundred maybe 200 tick marks so that's pretty interesting to see it uh, this big normally they're a bit smaller but it's a larger printer so there you go uh, and, you'll, and I'll take this apart and you'll see that it's driven by uh, this DC motor right here it turns the belt and there you go and that's how it tells it precisely where to go while it's still using the DC motor. Um, there's another one up here. Let me bring that to move the carriage back and forth as it's printing. Uh, it needs another uh, motor, and that's what this is right here. It's a standard DC. See, there you go. Only two wires, right? Stepper motor has uh, you know five or six. This one only has two. So in order to uh, make this accurate position where this carriage you know slides back and stops how is it going to do that well what it's going to do is the same same idea right it's got an encoder that's what this black thing right here is and there's small lines or um, vertically going up and down like this and so this carriage has a sensor on the back of this so it knows exactly where it's at sends it back and it tells the DC motor to move left to move right a little bit a lot and that's what that's what the point of that is so I'll just continue taking it apart I thought you might be interested in that let's see All right, so let's take this apart. 
Okay, this came off rather easy. Let me see if I can zoom in and uh, show you uh, a bit more clearly. Yeah, it's definitely going to be a manual zoom. See if I can show you a bit more clearly what's on this. There we go. So that is not a solid black perimeter and it's not translucent. What you're looking at is small little lines that are going up and down, up and down. So there is probably, I think that's probably right, about 100 lines just between 11 to 12, maybe, maybe even more. Um, to tell it what degree or what direction or how much it's advanced or retracted. So I apologize if that's not very clear. Um, the other lines for the carriage are a bit larger, so hopefully that'll that'll help. But uh, very interesting, very innovative. Um, it's certainly not a new idea, but it's nonetheless a very innovative idea. All right, this is the carriage DC motor here, and definitely. Uh, you keep these motors. These are very large, they're very powerful, they're very fast, and um, they're very cool. So I think I've used all the varies I can. Standard uh, large DC motor. Um, it's These are incredible. They're, they're, they're awesome. You can use them to pull uh, quite a bit of load. These have very, very good torque. Be because you recall when this thing's printed, it's like it's very fast and it quickly turns and this is why uh, I go to printers when I want to get a DC motor uh, because they're awesome. Okay, uh, enough about motors. Let's take this sensor off. I'll worry about that sensor in a little bit. Alright, let's see. Keep these belts. You never know when you're going to use them. I have a box of gears as well. Um, so. I want to get this DC motor up because this one I think I'm actually going to need for my project. Do I have that? All right, let's see if I even have... Ah, that'll work. Okay. And that's going to be quite a bit of, of unscrewing, so I'll probably have to tackle that. All right. So we've got screws all around. All right. Let's see. Got another one down here. I used to take TVs apart and grab parts from that, uh, but those were more electronic. Nothing really mechanical nature uh, within that. VCRs are a good one to grab photo sensors. Uh, they have smaller motors, so if you're looking for uh, another alternative to grab some motors, they will work. Um, they've got some gears and some other sensors. The problem with VCRs is, you know, they're just dealing with channels. They're not, mechanically, they're not that interesting. Um, so that's, that's the only downside about grabbing something like that. All right, looks like I'm going to have to really fight to get this off, so I'll work on that later. later. I want to see... So this here, this is the ink reservoir, um, and it's disgusting and nasty, and I think if I turn this, there we go, now I can move the carriage back and forth, just like a typewriter, right? And this thing is disgusting and full, um, when the printer decides to clean itself and waste your ink in the process, uh, this, is, <laughs> this is the storage. Uh, this is where it goes. This is probably the one thing that companies don't want you to see. They line the bottom of printers with cloth. Now this is a very thin cloth. I normally see ones that are about eight times as thick. And I've seen some where the whole bottom of the printer has cloths all around it to absorb the massive amount of ink that shit uh, uses. Now look at this. So this one is leaking. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see that, but it's definitely leaking. Oh, okay, that's fun. Um, here is ink gunk, right? So it's just a condensed form of ink that has leaked over time and it's all encrusted on the bottom of this. Um, I'm not sure if you can see that. And it's just disgusting and nasty, so I gotta throw that away. Right? Try the ink all over the place. Alright. So the rest here that we have, um, just the, you know, we have the belt. See if I can grab that out. 
Okay, and it's of course connected to this carriage, so I'll deal with that. Uh, this is the encoder for the carriage head, and we can take this out. And again, the um, the um, sensor, this rides through a sensor that's built onto this carriage. I'm hoping that this may be a little bit more clear. Uh, let's see here. Go back to manual. We'll zoom in. And hopefully, this makes it very clear. There we go. Uh, okay. Well, that's about as clear as I'm going to be able to get it, unfortunately. Um, hopefully this is visible, but again, there's lines going back and forth through here. And uh, the sensor um, recognizes when it's dark, when it's light, so when it absorbs light, when it's uh, when it can detect it. And then uh, they've got a counter built in, so it knows exactly the position and how many it's gone before it drops, you know, a red, green, blue, cyan, magenta, black, white, whatever color decides um, to be used. Um, so that's what this, this is what this is. This is an encoder strip. Of course, it has to go the full length of whatever the carriage head um, length is. That makes sense. All right, next, let's see if I can grab this off. Alright, so this is uh, part of the track for the carriage head. Let's see if I can see that. Alright, so I'm going to try and take this off. How does that come off? Okay, that's easy enough. Bend, push up, and. Bend, push up, come on. Oh, I see. Okay. There we go. So, this is the piece of steel track that this rides on. I'm just unhooking it. Oh. I think I'm going to actually need this as well. The, over here, I'm not sure if it can be seen, this is a belt tensioner, so um, you can't have a fixed distance, you want your belt to be a little bit loose, and so this is almost like a dampener in a car, right? So you put the belt on, and then it pushes it on one side to give it an extra tug so it's, so it's taut, right? It's not loose, it's not too tight, it's just nice and taut, that's what that is right there. Okay. Let me see. Let me switch out. Like this. There's always this big debate whether it's more economical to print with ink or with toner. And I've, you know, I've used and I'm certified to repair some of that technology. And, um, I tried to convince myself a lot that ink was more affordable, that it made more sense, but I've been using laser for the last four or five years. I have a monochrome as well as a color, and uh, I will tell you that there's no waste in toner because this thing cleans itself while you're asleep, you know. Um, it's good for the companies, and there are certain situations where you need ink, not toner. And that's fine, but I think for the average consumer, sometimes I think it's worth to just spend two or three hundred, get yourself a decent laser printer, and uh, keep that for like 10, 15 years. All right. So, metal small wheels to keep the paper down. Um, they're very sharp, so we don't need it. Don't need this. Okay. 
Uh, this I would recommend keeping. There's a lot of really neat pieces on something like this. You could use this long stem. This is a nice round piece of steel. Uh, there's another one here. Um, what's nice about something like this is you have several gears, in this case four, they are exactly the same. So if you need that for, for a special project, for example, you need four wheels, so you need four gears. You know, right here you have four that are exactly the same. And again, it's a name brand. This is a very professional style inkjet printer. So it's designed to, um, it's designed to last. So these aren't going to be cheap and break down. I'm not sure why I have this here. So back to what I was saying, yes, I've been using a laser jet. Uh, it's well worth it for me. I print um, probably about 800 pages a month uh, between school and work. Um, sometimes I prefer manuals that are printed. Sometimes I prefer that they're online. It just depends kind of what I'm studying and how I'm studying. So that's why I print off so much. And of course my work. All right. The nice thing about tones too is they're definitely less messy. Uh, this is very messy. And they're expensive too. All right, there we go. So um, if you were to just throw this away, you would actually miss out on a lot of pretty good parts. Again, you have screws, they're all the same. But, you know, in between here, there's a very nice spring. Right here. Nice spring or coil, depending on what type of mattress you're trying to sell. <laughs> anyway, good size spring. Uh, yeah, the rest is crap. All right, so, you know, what we have left is we have the carriage. We have the belt here. Um, definitely, I'll, then I'm going to keep this. I think it's going to be pretty handy. There we go. Uh, all we have, um, as far as the electronics go, are these two very nice sized motors. And I'm going to get them out right now because I need them. Let's see. Let's see, how easy is it going to be? Oh, HP, you are clever. I see. Obviously, you don't we just want to pull on these wires and lose your type of connection, so just be careful. So, there's the second DC motor, or the third motor in total, because one of them was a stepper motor. Again, very good quality. When I feel this, I can feel the bushings. And I've got a big honking one right here, so let's take this out. It's smart to keep all of this uh, separate. Keep your screws and your um, springs, coils, belts. Keep them all separate. Uh, they come in handy when you really need to look for something, especially when you're in a pinch and you don't have time to uh, mess around. Let's see. Again, keep these, the very nice steel rods come in handy. This is the uh, paper pickup. Okay, and I think I should have sufficient room now to... All right. Oh, all right, let me just bust this tab. There we go. So this is a very large uh, DC motor as well. Um, this is definitely more powerful than what I need, but I may just use it because it's for show. Um, good size, excellent torque. Uh, the only thing really left on here that I think that I really need is I'm going to take these sensors. They're hard to come by and uh, obviously they're going to be good quality. So I may grab those. Let's see. And that's about it for what I'm looking for. 
I would encourage if you've never done this before to take the thing completely apart. And you know, if you're into it, try and figure out why HP did what they did. You know, why did they use this encoder? You, know, you take a look at a lot of other encoders and you look at this, and this one's this one's very, very precise. It's very interesting. Um, in fact, I might look this up. I'm not sure how this one seems to work. Oh, look at this. Here we go. Wow. That is pretty neat. Four wires. Okay, so it's just a standard but a very precise one. So we have that. Again, we have this encoder here. Springs, make sure we keep those. Um, okay. Alright, I just manhandled this encoder out of there because uh, it was fairly easy to do. Uh, okay. So there's that. Alright, the only thing else we have is the small wire harness that's back here. Obviously, this is a very professional printer. It was very expensive. The way the the detail, you know, the extra protective coating for these uh, wires that says the um, power in straight from your wall, you know, uh, the detail in zip tying every every couple of uh, inches, and then there's more zip ties all along here. Um, so. Clearly, if I was going to buy a printer and I needed an inkjet, you know, obviously this is why you would choose the professional series. Um, it's designed to last, and I'm sure this is probably about 15 years old, maybe a, a little older. I'm not sure. So I'm going to stop right there. I'm sure this video is long enough as it is. I'll probably keep a couple other components, otherwise discard it. But you know what? What was gained? So here's what was gained. All right, we've got a uh, stepper motor. We have three DC motors. Uh, this one's the largest one, then we have a medium and a small. We have some controller boards. Uh, we've got switches, LEDs. We've got power converter that actually this could be used for in a small project if you wanted to. You know, you know what your input is right from the house, so just fix that back up and then you can just measure out what your voltages are. So, you know, this can definitely be very useful. In fact, I may use it. May use it for, huh? I'm going to use this. Okay, um, springs. As I said, I mentioned enough about encoders. I'm sure uh, to last a lifetime. And um, you've also got metal and steel rails. These are these are handy uh, gears because they're all the same, and so you can use them in, in a specific project. And um, wires, wire harnesses. You have the wire connectors. They can be very handy and make your life a lot easier. So I hope you enjoyed it. And um, go find a cheap printer or a free one and take it apart. Yeah, one last thing. Um, you may want to wash your hands.